So Baron Corbin would start off riding high off of 2015 and then floundered around for half of 2016 and then finally got back into the game right at the end of it. So Baron Corbin was involved in a triple threat match between Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe on January 27th episode of NXT to determine the number one contender for Finn Balor's NXT championship, but Corbin lost after Zayn and Joe both applied submissions to him at the same time with Corbin submitting. And this would lead to an awesome two-athlete false match between Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe, but that will never... But... but uh, I don't think I need to debate that since it's magic, since it's NXT. William Regal did not give Corbin another title opportunity, leading to Corbin saying Regal would regret his decision. And on March 2nd episode of NXT, after Regal introduced the debuting Austin Aries, Corbin attacked Aries from behind, beginning a feud between the two. At NXT TakeOver Dallas, uh, Corbin lost to Aries, and on April 13th episode of NXT, Corbin would defeat Tucker Knight in his final appearance in NXT. So, I didn't, like I said in previous videos regarding some of the NXT stars that made their transition to the main roster, I didn't watch NXT a lot, I was just more, mainly watching their specials, so I, well, just didn't watch NXT, which is why I am canceling the Shinsuke Nakamura, Asuka, and Samoa and Joe videos I was planning to work on because I did not watch NXT for the most of the part of 2016. So Corbin made his main roster debut at WrestleMania 32. Okay, like when I saw him, I was like, so we're just gonna throw him in there. No announcement, no, no hype, no promotion, no nothing. We're just going to have him show up there. And it's not even a surprise entry like him making an entrance theme music. Instead, we get Shaquille O'Neal. I really just said that. So, I'm wondering, oh god. Why does Dunn hate you guys? Just because he's bad at Triple H doesn't mean he has a right to punish everybody who likes him. Or at least works with him. But that would mean he has to punish himself. I wonder if he does that. Nah, that would be too stupid. So, Corbin made his, made his unannounced entrance in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and surprisingly was the winner. I was not expecting that. Like the fan But Corbin, however, there was this one problem. He's from NXT and the fans are hardcore fans at WrestleMania every year. So, yeah, Corbin was the most popular guy of the night that match. He, was, he last eliminated Kane to win the top trophy. He then made his debut the following night on Raw, battling to a double countout against Dolph Ziggler, and Corbin continued his assault after the match, executing an end of days on the, on the arena floor on Ziggler. So this started a feud between him and Dolph Ziggler, and Corbin made his SmackDown debut the following week, defeating Zack Ryder. Corbin faced off with Dolph Ziggler at Payback pre-show in a losing effort after a roll-off making his first... Main roster loss on there. So, yeah, 50 50 bookings coming in now because of a double count out and Corbin assaulting him. We gotta give Ziggler a win, even though we're not gonna do anything with Ziggler later down the road. And even though Corbin was billed up as a badass and an indie killer gimmick, uh, yeah, we're not gonna do that. Which begs the question, since Corbin was one of the most hated heels in NXT because of his indie killer gimmick, I'm wondering if he'll do an IWC killer gimmick where he tries to go after every guy that the IWC loves. You know, well, Dolph Ziggler was one of them. Uh, he could go after AJ Styles next. He could go after The Miz, since everyone's starting to like The Miz now, ever since his promo on Talking Smack. That could give something Corbin to do and add some much needed character. So, anyways, after his first lo loss, the next night on Raw, Ziggler eliminated Corbin from the Battle Royale to determine the number one contender for the U.S. Championship. After his elimination, Corbin proceeded to viciously attack Ziggler, causing an elimination by Rusev. Rusev Crash! Corbin defeated Ziggler decisively on the May 10th episode of Raw, which averted the score between the two at 1-1. At Extreme Rules, Corbin defeated Ziggler again in an ODQ match, this time by low blow. And then, the next night on Raw, Ziggler would confront Corbin again and challenge him to a technical wrestling match on the May 30th episode of Raw, which Corbin accepted. The match occurred the following week with Ziggler wearing this, this wrestling outfit that you would see at high school gyms. 
with Corbin winning by disqualification after Ziggler hitting him with a low blow at the start of the match. And then Ziggler and Corbin would face off one more time at Money in the Bank in which Corbin beat Ziggler to end their feud. And this is precisely the problem. I wanted this feud to end so badly for two reasons. One, it wasn't interesting. And two, it damaged Corbin more than it helped him. Since, well, you had him lose the first outing. Like, the double count I, I get, but... But the first round, but when you did the second round, that ultimately was like, oh god. And the and the announcers keep reminding us that, oh, you see, he was in the royal. He he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. That means something. Yeah, um, that doesn't mean anything for two reasons. One, Cesaro. Look how that turned out for him after he won it. Two. You gave it to Big Show, even though everyone wanted Sandow to win. Or Mizdow. And also, why? Like, it didn't give any indication he was in this match, so... Yeah. So Corbin went off the grid for a bit. They started airing vignettes like he's going to make his debut. And then there was rumors speculating that, oh, he's going to fight Brock Lesnar, which I thought was stupid. So, I thought that would be a bad idea. Since, one, Corbin's still young and, well, we can't afford him to get buried by Brock Lesnar's dominating performances. And I thought that, like I said, I thought that would be a bad idea to go with. Like, it wouldn't make any sense. So, Corbin would be drafted to SmackDown Live on the July 19th episode of SmackDown, on the debut of SmackDown Live during the 2016 WWE Draft. And Corbin would lose to Apollo Crews in a triple threat match, if also featuring Kalisto, with the winner receiving an Intercontinental Championship against the Miz at SummerSlam. Corbin would then go on to assault Kalisto backstage in the preceding weeks after blaming him for his loss, and Kalisto was eventually injured at the hands of Corbin and was out of action for several months. And Baron Corbin also cut a promo at SummerSlam explaining how he was supposed to have a match with Kalisto at SummerSlam, and it was a very underrated promo, like they just flew off under the grid. Went under the grid for everybody because everyone was also focusing on the rest of the show. Like AJ Styles versus John Cena, Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton. Yeah, so Baron Corbin delivered a pretty good promo and it went under, under the grid. Like even I didn't notice it. I had to look back on that when Ryan Delbert at Bleacher Report pointed that out. So, whoops. So on August 30th episode of SmackDown, Corbin defeated WWE Champion Dean Ambrose by after disqualification by disqualification after AJ Styles interfered, and they teased Baron Corbin and AJ Styles having a feud, so that would be awesome. And then at Backlash, Corbin defeated Apollo Crews on a pre-show, and that was pointless and a waste of time. Corbin then started a feud with Jack Swagger, who made his debut on SmackDown Live after leaving Raw, who defeated Corbin when the referee believed Corbin to be submitting when he was reaching for the top for the ropes while in the Patriot Lock. Yeah, I was questioning that too. Corbin would go on to defeat Swagger at No Mercy on, and on October 18th episode of SmackDown Live, and on November 1st episode of SmackDown Live, Corbin was announced as one of the ten as one of the team SmackDown members for Survivor Series. The following week, he was injured by the returning Kalisto, thus being removed from the Team SmackDown. As a result, Shane McMahon took his place. And this is the, precisely the next problem. It would have been interesting where Baron Corbin in the Survivor Series matchup. However, what we got was really awesome. But I always was curious, but I've been curious, like, what could have been if Baron Corbin was involved? It would have been really interesting. But Corbin retaliated, and thus the problem with Survivor Series happened, where we get WWE logic, everybody! Corbin retaliated, returning on that same night, so he clearly was healthy enough to compete. So, yeah. Where he attacked both Brian Kendrick and Kalisto, resulting in a disqualification victory for Kendrick, which resulted in... The Cruiserweight title staying on Raw, and the Cruiserweight division staying on Raw, even though I've complained numerous reasons why that was a stupid effing idea, because for one reason alone, travel expenses. But no, we gotta waste more money for some reason, even though we really could save more money out of this, budgetarily wise. 
And plus, at this point, I was thinking SmackDown could fix anything that, me, that WWE Raw was screwing up with. And that really counts the Cruiserweight division. So Corbin went to back was backstage. Daniel Bryan confronted him, explaining how he's how he messed up big time on this. And Barry Corbin explained how he didn't want any more tests around. So that would have been interesting to see Corbin go out to the cruiserweight division. That would have been really interesting. Seeing all these small guys go out to this larger guy it would have given the cruiserweight division some more focus. Now that I think about it, that would have actually been an interesting storyline. Uh, this big guy doesn't like all these smaller guys around. That's sort of like WCW back then, when the, when reality wise they were like, oh, these cruiserweights, oh, they're nothing to us. Hey, uh, Scott Hall, can you beat up Chris Jericho for us? Okay. And that would have been an interesting storyline to blend that old reality of back then to put into now. And this is just me thinking about it off the top of my head, literally within a minute. So, the next week on SmackDown, uh, Corbin defeated Kane via disqualification when Kalisto interfered and attacked Corbin. It was later announced on Talking Smack by General Manager Daniel Bryan that the pair would face off each other at TLC in a chairs match. With... And I love this one moment because Corbin was outside the ring, Kalisto had a chair, and, you know, and on Raw you would get this. The face has a steel chair ready to smack the living skull out of somebody. The heel would just walk off, but Barry Corbin was like, huh, I could walk away, but I'm going to take the risk and just go in there right away. Yay! And I'm like, yep. Yes, yes, yes. This is a perfect heel scenario. This is perfect. This is perfect, damn it. A guy not willing to run away from the fight? Oh my god, I must be matching things. Is SmackDown Live smarter? So, yeah. SmackDown Live points to that. And Corbin would face off with Kalisto in the chairs match. And let's just pour, point it short and sweet. That was probably the best chairs match ever. Yeah, no, not kidding. Corbin and Kalisto delivered a great chairs match. Like, this is something The Undertaker couldn't do, Batista couldn't do, John Cena couldn't do, and I'm pretty sure John Cena's pissed off at that. And though he buried Wade Bear with it, so I think he's still smiling about that. Literally, he buried Wade Barrett in chairs. So yeah, that was interesting. So, afterwards, uh, Corbin again defeated Kalisto in a rematch the following SmackDown to end their feud. Corbin would go on to confront Dolph Ziggler on the, the week, like on December 20th episode of SmackDown, who had just become number one contender for the AJ, for AJ Styles' renamed Dode Championship the previous week. And Corbin says that he was taking opportunities from the guys and was basically wasting them. And this led to a match between the two with, num with the number one contender spot on the line. The match ended in a double countout. And Daniel Bryan made the decision that on December 27th episode of SmackDown Live, the WWE Championship would be made a triple threat match between Styles, Ziggler, and Corbin. And this match, being Corbin's first title opportunity in WWE, was won by Styles, who pinned Ziggler. And this was the most interesting aspect. Like, I was, like, there were two reasons why I was looking at this at a positive outcome. One, it was reported that this was done to protect AJ Styles' ankle injury because he suffered an injury from injury at TLC. So, okay, okay. But this also highlights, for me at least, that this is SmackDown taking risks. Not leaps of faith. They haven't done that yet, or else we would see Roman Reigns as a heel right now and Wyatt as oh, the crazy backwards cult guy be world champion in the face of a company. But those leaps of faiths don't happen anymore. Dada doesn't have balls. So, yeah. So this led to the triple threat match, and it was awesome. Corbin held his own, like, yeah, Ziggler and Styles helped out. And like I said in the Dolph Ziggler and Styles videos, I just the, love the moment where they just shrug their shoulders like they look at each other, look at Corbin who's laying out on the announcer's table, and they were just like, eh, fuck it. Fly! And then they just crashed into the table. That was hilarious. 
Oh, man, that was funny. So, yeah, it was a hell of a match. Uh, Corbin almost... And here's the thing. Where they would just, like, let the face get a chance to win. Corbin almost got the win. Corbin almost won that match. If it wasn't for Styles getting the last laugh, he would have been WWE Champion. And I honestly would not complain for two reasons. One, Styles gets to be protected from John Cena's shovel. And two... Baron Corbin gets an up. WWE takes a risk again. And then, like, a few weeks prior, while I was wondering, man, this guy, Baron Corbin's getting such a big push in this. Like, and then a report came out. I found out a report came out, and they said that there was consideration that Baron Corbin was going to feud with Cena at the Royal Rumble to give Cena something to do till WrestleMania, where he most likely, will face The Undertaker at. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. So you're not pushing Corbin for the sake of pushing him. You're pushing him because, oh, we need a big, strong guy to be pushed to the top just so Cena can knock him down. Well, you see, we can't let the children lose faith in Cena. Luckily, that did not happen because that plan has been scrapped. But I would say what happened on SmackDown Live this on at uh, <laughs> on the second week of January. Um, I would say something about that, but I will just say that this is just John Cena's new crusade against the new era. But this is not that's not 2016. So Baron Corbin, like I said, he was on this indie killer gimmick, and then went to this biker gimmick, and then was floundering around for a bit with Dolph Ziggler, and then finally was getting the opportunities he should have been given after he had won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Now it felt like it was being taken seriously. Like, when I hear the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner, and considering what Corbin has been doing for the past couple of months, it actually feels like, yeah, he, yeah, it actually, yeah I can actually take this seriously now. However, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Battle Royale, it's pretty much useless at this point. Like, no disrespect to Andre the Giant, but, like, the match itself, like, it has no value. Like, take a look at the past winners. Cesaro was poised for a main event push. Oh, Vince McMahon, uh, I, Vince McMahon, deemed that he is boring and has no charisma, and the fans don't like him, even though there's clearly a thousands of Cesaro section signs and everyone loves the spin. Uh... Cancel that push. Oh, and giving Paul Heyman to lead job of him so we could just have him scream out about Undertaker's streak being broken by Brock Lesnar. Big show. He lost the, he lost his first singles match afterwards after only a month. And like I said, everyone wanted to see Miz Dow win. Or literally anyone else that wasn't Big Show. Like if it was Cesaro, I'm pretty sure no one would have complained. But Damian Miz Dow definitely deserved that opportunity. Not Big Show, like if Big Show, if this was Big Show's last match, then I would have, then I could have forgiven them. But no, it wasn't. So yeah, well, so I'm hoping Barry Corbin does great in 2017. I hope he has more opportunities ahead of him and not get horribly buried by Cena. Though let's be honest, considering that there's a war between Ryan War of SmackDown Live and John Cena of the My Time Is Now era, that's going to be difficult to do. <laughs> so everyone this was Neo Reality Engine feel free to like, comment, subscribe and donate to tune for more